Good evening, live from this news center of the Sultanate of Oman Television. Here we present to you a 7 o'clock news bulletin first, the headlines. Around 14,000 pilgrims complete their travel procedures to the Holy Land for Hajj mission. Squid fishing season starts today along the Sultanate coasts. And UNICEF warns of another cholera outbreak in Yemen. Good evening once again and thank you for joining us. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. Around 14,000 pilgrims from the Sultanate are completing their travel arrangements to the Holy Land to perform Hajj this year. The Minister of Endowments and Religious Affairs revealed in a press conference today that the number of applicants for Hajj opportunities this year amounted to more than 27,000 citizens and residents out of which only 13,048 citizens and 550 residents were accepted. More details in the following report by Saleh bin Khalfan al-Rahbi. In preparations for the pilgrimage season for this year, the Omani Hajj mission revealed its readiness at a press conference today, where all basic arrangements have been taken for the pilgrims' travel from the Sultanate. In addition, 99.7% of the 14,000 registered pilgrims have already completed their travel procedures to the Holy Land. Praised be to Allah, the mission has completed all necessary arrangements to, uh, to travel to the Holy Land. And we hope in this season the services will meet the satisfaction of the pilgrims of the Sultanate. The mission confirmed its readiness and the development of the services it offers to the pilgrims in the holy sites, including the camps in Mina and Arafat. The mission also stressed the need for pilgrims to be prepared in all aspects. We have worked on improving the services we offer to the pilgrims, especially those related to air conditioning and the quality of the tent used to host the pilgrims. It is important that the pilgrims familiarize themselves with Hajj rituals and that they take the necessary vaccination before the journey. 70.2% of the pilgrims will travel by air and 29.8% will travel by land. The deadline set by the competent authorities in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the entry of pilgrims coming by land would be before the first of Dhul Hijjah, and for the entry of those coming by air, the last day would be the fourth of Dhul Hijjah. It is worth mentioning that the Omani Hajj mission will leave for Saudi Arabia on August the 8th. For the Sultanate of Oman Television, Saleh bin Khalfan al-Rahbi, Masqat. Squid fishing season started today along the southern coast and will last until the end of January 2019. The fishing season determined by the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries Wealth. The Minister announced its readiness for the season through completing all administrative guidance awareness and monitoring procedure. This season comes one month before the start of shrimp catching season and five months after the start of the lobster fishing season. The Ministry ensures on enforcing fishing law and its regulation through through intensifying the monitoring work. <clears throat> Within the framework of the programs and cultural activities that are organized by Sultan Qaboos Youth Compound for Culture and Entertainment in Salala during Kharif season, a cultural evening was organized under the theme Oman History, Time, Characteristics and Geography. The evening dwelt on features of Oman history through ages and discussed the foundations of the Omani civilization and its contributions to Islamic civilization. The event also shed light on the Sultanate's strategic locations, its pivotal role and relations on the regional and international level. The event called for more national cohesion, affirming that what has made Oman stable, secure and country of peace was the wise leadership and vision of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos. The evening was uh, presented uh, by His Excellency Dr. Isam bin Ali Al Rawaz, Vice Chairman of the Public Authority for Craft Industries. 
With the aim to promote the march of Islamic financing sectors to achieve development, an awareness program on Islamic banking was organized in the governorate of the FAR. The program focused on the spreading the Islamic banking awareness and its financial products. It's also aimed to enhance investment awareness and discuss development of local and foreign financing services market. The program included work papers about the economic developments in the southern securities markets and investment funds. It also discussed mechanisms of focusing on regulation system for real estate investment funds. Now for the international news, the Syrian army and its allies had taken full control of the Yarmouk Basin in the southwest of the country. The Daesh group uh, painted on abandoned uh, buildings, burnt out military vehicles left behind on streets and personal belongings left in hideouts. Syrian army tanks and military planes uh, fired and hit targets in the northwestern countryside of Dara province. The army seized the group's main uh, redou uh, redoubt in the town of uh, Shajara, which left just a few villages in the hands of a Daesh-affiliated faction, the Khalid uh, ibn al-Walid army, that had controlled the Yarmouk Basin. Between 1,000 and 1,500 insurgents who, who had been holding uh, their ground in the area yielded under the attack. The basin uh, borders Israel and Jordan and had been the last embattled uh, pocket of the southwest after a sustained advance uh, by government forces into the long-time rebel stronghold. The United Nations Children's Agency is warning of uh, another cholera outbreak in war-torn Yemen after airstrikes hit water facilities and other civilian infra infrastructure in the port city of Hodeida. UNICEF Executive Director Enhirata Four said today that the airstrikes earlier this week damaged a sanitation facility and station that supplies most of the city's water. She said such attacks jeopardize efforts to prevent another outbreak of cholera and acute water diarrhea in or watery diarrhea in Yemen. Yemen has been embroiled in a stalemate a war which damaged the country's infrastructure, crippled by health system and pushed the country to the brink of famine. <clears throat> Hundreds of Lebanese troops and officers uh, paraded in Fayette Army Base in Mount Lebanon today to celebrate the 73rd Lebanese Army Day. Lebanese President Michel Aoun, Speaker Nabil Barry, Prime Minister Saad Hariri and other local and foreign officers attended the ceremony. Addressing graduation officer at the parade, Aoun reiterated his country's uh, position vis-a-vis -vis Israel and warned that the letter will not prevent them from taking advantage of their oil resources. He also cited United Nations Resolutions 1701, which established a blue line in 2000 to mark the border between Lebanon and Israel in order to prevent confrontations among the parties. A Californian Air National Guard C-130 plane dropped a fire retardant on the car fire which has burned at least 965 homes and killed six people in and around Redding, California. Another 413 outbuildings were also destroyed and the blaze is now the seventh most destructive wildfire in California history. The fire had burned more than 457 square kilometers and was 30 percent contained by late yesterday. National Guard troops are also in Reading assisting local law enforcement and the local population. <coughs> All 101 people on board uh, an Aeromexico plane that crashed and caught fire shortly after taking off in northern Mexico survived, with many passengers escaping the wreck ahead of the flames. One unidentified passenger told the Millennial television news channel of a hole opening up behind her and of passengers escaping through it. Officials in Durango State described an unusual accident scene with some survivors walking back to the nearby airport to seek out relatives as firefighters battled to put out the fires in the nearby intact timber 190 which lay on its belly 
in a field in the state capital, also called Durango. State governor said 49 people had been hospitalized. While the cause of the crash has not been determined, officials say the flight took off in a heavy storm. Some passengers uh, said they heard a loud noise as the plane's left wing banged to the ground and both engines tore loose. The plane stayed upright uh, through and the escape slides activated. Still to come in our news bulletin, Cool water and overshadowing trees attract visitors to Bald Village in Wilayat of Vang. عبق فاح بين جنباتها فنفثت سلاما برائحة لبانها حلقت عاليا نحو السماء فنقشت بابجدياتها تاريخا جميلا وبكرمها امست مضربا للامثال مهرجان صلاة السياحي 2018 من العاشر من يوليو إلى الخامس والعشرين من أغسطس Welcome back uh, to the news from the South and the Man Television. As part of the accompanying events in Aruya Youth Initiative Awards, 100 Omani Innovators continues its activities in Ibra College of Technology. Pioneers in scientific innovation were invited to the discussions panel, which was followed by a variety of events targeting the innovative attendees to expand their horizons and ideas and help them convert their ideas into the workable uh, proto types and products which then can be expanded into enterprises that contribute to the Omani job market. His Excellency Abdus Salam bin Mohammed Al Marshadi, the Chief Executive Officer of the State General Reserve Fund, attended and participated in the discussions panel of this particular workshop. Over a period of five days, the programs and activities of the club's youth camp continue at Nizu Sports Complex in Adakhili Governor, where more than 60 girls have uh, taken part in various sports, cultural and social programs. Once again, Saleh bin Khalfan al Rahbi was there, and he has this report. More than 60 girls representing various clubs of the Sultanate participated in the club's youth camp organized by the Ministry of Sport Affairs in Nizwa Sports Complex. It's a great opportunity to spend my summer with other girls and to meet um, people from different regions of Oman. There are so many benefits that I will gain from this. Uh, for example, um, there are some um, workshops that are being held, which is, will add to my value and will help me in my future career as well. This camp is very important for us uh, because we learn different skills and cultures and uh, social and sports aspects. The development village was one of the main activities of the camp, where a number of specialized workshops and seminars familiarize the participants with some social, recreational and voluntary themes. Participating in the youth camps uh, let us meet new girls from uh, different uh, regions of Oman, which is different cultures, and then now we have to deal with, uh, with them, different personalities, which will improve our communication skills. I'm very excited to participate in this camp and uh, inshallah we will get a lot of uh, skills uh, like leadership, organization, socialization and we hope all of the girls that to get all of these skills. In addition to the sports and social activities, the program of the camp included field trips to key touristic and cultural landmarks in the Governorate of ad giving the participants a chance to learn about these places. Participating in such youth camps does not only help the youth to sharpen their expertise, but will also help the clubs discover the talented youth 
who will serve as the backbone of these clubs in social and national activities. From Nizwa Sports Complex, Saleh Bokhalfan al Rahbi, Al Dakhaliya, Governorate. And now, all the way to the. Uh, oh, this is another story here. To raise awareness of the tourism uh, potentials in South Al Batina and engage the community and companies to promote and discover these attraction sites, the local directorate of tourism organized a tourism awareness forum in An Norman Fort in the Wilaya of Barka. Besides the exhibitions of the Directorate of Tourism in South al Governor, Governorate, the forum included exhibitions corners for the other public and private organizations like Oman Women Association, the Public Authority for Handicraft Industries, Oman Falcons Bike Team, Beit al Ghasham Museum and Beit al Gharbi Museum. The exhibition corners showed a collection of Omani traditional products and items which gives a local and authentic understanding of Oman tourism experience in the Governorate of South Al-Batina. And now all the way to the Wilaya of Thank, uh, at, in particular at uh, Balt Village. It's another tourism destination in Oman. It's pro it provides an escape from the hot weather in the summer with water streaming between the rocks and the overshadowing trees that are found in the wadi. The place is just 65 kilometers north of the Wilaya and can be reached with four-wheel vehicles to enjoy the moderate weather and the refreshing cool dip in the Wadi Ponds. And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate, cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of Lofar and its nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. Rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with chances of cloud accumulation and scattered rainfall over the Hajar Mountains. Low clouds and fog late at night and early morning are expected over the coast of the Arabian Sea and Sea of Oman. Winds will be southeasterly light to moderate. Seas will be slight to moderate with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. More details on your screen. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television, and now before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Around 14,000 pilgrims complete their travel procedures to the Holy Land for Hajj mission. Squid fishing season starts today along the Sultanate coasts. And UNICEF warns of another cholera outbreak in Yemen. With that, uh, we do conclude this news bulletin brought to you live from this news center of the Sultanate of Oman Television. From the entire news team and myself, we do thank you for joining us. Wish you a pleasant evening and good night.